How is it going, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and anything of the other? I'm Root of the Null, and uh, we're jumping right back into the RE module in Python and regular expressions. Now, in the last video, we built a small little, like, testing environment, a kind of tool or a toy to just kind of experiment with values of, regu of regular expressions, test out what special characters will do, and that sort of thing. Now, in this video, I'm just going to slightly expand it. And you might hate this, but these are all things, these are, these are all more functionality that I'm going to add that I, per se, will not be using. But I'm just showing you that you have this option that you can do this if you want to. <laughs> so, uh, it, it's a good video to watch if you want to watch it. If you don't want to watch it and you just want to jump into regular expressions, move the heck right on. But, just to expand, let's expand. I'm gonna go ahead and import the sys module. <laughs> now, I also have a, uh, another tutorial series on the sys module in Python. And it's, it's a good series, I mean, I, I don't like to brag, but you know. What I'm going to test is if there are any command line arguments for the RE testing program. Um, maybe we don't have to modify the pattern and the string variables in the source code. Maybe you could just code a pass it to the program and it'll know to do it on its own. It'll know to figure out what these exactly are. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you what we can do. If the length of the arg values that are passed is just one, then we'll go ahead and uh, actually we will have to realize that we don't have what the pattern is or what the uh, what the string is. So we want to test a raw input. We'll say, please enter the pattern. And we'll add a new line. And then we'll say, please, actually, we'll just set this to be, remember to keep that as your variable. Pattern can equal this and the string can equal whatever the user enters for that. Please enter the string. I'm just going to test this out. We're going to go ahead and print pattern and then string right after that. Let's head over to our terminal, find out what we've got here. My caps lock is on, what the heck. RE testing and no variables. We're going to want to use um, two equal signs for the uh, testing is equal to operand and inner, inner conditional statement. That's a bad syntax error on my behalf. Please enter the pattern lets you dot uh, asterisk and then enter the string. It's going to be this is a lie. Enter. And then prints it out and then it gives us exactly what we need. Cool. So that's the functionality that we have. Else, let's do a little bit of testing. If length of sys dot argv is equal to 2, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say pattern can go ahead and equal sys.argv 1 and string can go ahead and equal this. And then the other scenario 3 the pattern can go ahead and actually equal, the string can go ahead and equal arg2. Now let's test this out. Are we testing? Please under the pattern, we've got everything. Let's say all. Did we print out the string? Did we tell it to print out the string? Okay. Let's actually add a few new lines so I'm not confusing myself. I'm going to say just an equal sign as a divider and multiply that by 80. And then we'll add another new line right on there. Please enter the pattern dot asterisk. And then let's just spew lots of stuff out there. And okay, then we have a divider. I'll spew that down just to like 70. Just so it's, it's clean for us. And what if we had the other scenario where dot asterisk. Let's test out this. That works just fine. Now let's actually supply a pattern, and now it asks us to enter the string, which can be this, and that will work just fine for us. What if we enter a pattern as well as a this? That will work just well for us as well. Okay, really, really simple, just a few if statements to test whether or not we have command line arguments for our program. 
good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. I'm just going to throw this in a function. Test for command line arguments. I'm actually just going to throw that down at the bottom because I am very likely not going to use it. But we do have that if we need it. I'm just going to code, code fold that, you know, and then get that out of my mind. We'll keep the divider because I think that looks nice. And now we actually have to uncomment what we commented out before, and we get the pattern and string that we were initially using in the last video. Cool, cool stuff. I also want to kind of try out a different thing. Let's say... Let's say we want to scrap these conditional statements. What if we didn't want to test whether or not the match really existed? What if we, if we didn't have a match, right, and we didn't display there was no match found. What if we just didn't highlight anything? Would that make sense? Let's try it. I'm just going to copy and paste this code, because it's all going to do the exact same thing, in all honesty. And let's just change the indentation. What if we run this? Now it works just fine. We didn't even have to determine whether or not there was a match or not. What if we were to say this, something that is not in our string? Okay, now the none type has no attribute start, because matched object, it didn't find a match. So now the matched object is just none, and you can't run a start function on a none object. So let's throw this in a try and accept statement. Even if it fails, don't do anything, because we're just going to print out whatever we want. I guess start can equal... Let's see if this will even work, actually. No, it won't. Start will not equal much of anything. Start can equal... Mm. It still needs a variable, you see, for start and end. Even if, even if we don't have the match object. So if there is no match... What we'll do is we'll have to use something else. We'll just print that string. But you know, when we set that up this way, we could just entirely still use our conditional statement and just actually print out the string. So this whole, whole shabam with the try and accept statement is not worth our time. Well, that was a fun mental experiment. I don't know if many of you were actually able to keep, keep up with that. I, I Honestly, I shouldn't have just kind of blazed on right ahead. But what I was trying to at least find out is whether or not I could just display the string if there was no match. But I suppose I was not thinking that the else statement would do just that if I just told it to print out the string without any color decoration. Simple stuff. But we do have the test with command line arguments um, function now, which is a good help if, if you people want to use that. I suppose I won't. I'll just go ahead and modify the pattern in the string in the source code. But you have that option if you just want to be able to play with this more on your own. It should be able to make things a little bit faster. You can use the command line arguments from your command line. You don't have to go right back into your source code or switch back and forth to your text editor. Okay. Good. Simple stuff. That's all I wanted to do for this video. Not really kind of learn anything new with regular expressions yet. Just kind of experiment with the testing environment that we have so far. Okay. Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> did I even say a word there? I think I said thank, guys. Not, not thanks, guys. Thank you, guys, for watching and supporting all the crap that I do. I will see you in the next tutorial.